Okay, the last one in this um, special series for Autism Awareness Month just had to be about food because I know that so many people absolutely love food or have a very selective diet that they enjoy eating if they have sensory processing difficulties. Now, like on all of my workshops when I talk about food, it takes more than a day to be able to understand it fully. Eating involves all of our sensory systems, it's a really really important part for our bodies to have so therefore there's more sensory systems that are involved in the activity of eating. So I wanted to just highlight to you that I know loads of people that are chefs, that are cooks, that create recipes, that create menus, whether it's working for organisations or whether it's just an interest that they have that they do when they're at home and when they're in their own space. Um, when we think about eating naturally we might think about taste and flavours. I know so many people that are so good at being able to identify what um, a food needs to make it just taste absolutely amazing. So adding in salt or maybe adding in cinnamon or something which is really going to give it a kick. Contrasts in flavours, contrasts in textures. So someone who's hyposensitive might be looking out for those identifications in taste sensations. Now if you've been on one of my workshops you know that we also rely on our sense of smell when we're eating. And so for us to be able to determine those flavours, it might be that when we like cooking, we prefer cooking outside because the air changes the way that the, the food smell or the way that we're cooking changes the way that the food tastes because we're outside, maybe we're having a barbecue. And then if you cook the same food inside, it's, it tastes very, very different. So some people are, are really, really aware of those changes in the flavour and of the tastes. Think about texture, so if someone's hyposensitive to tactile information, they're looking for lots and lots of input from different textures, different, different um, feelings, maybe in their mouth or visually. So um, when we're eating something, it might be that the combination of foods are together because of the texture. So we might have something hard and crunchy, but we also might have something soft. I know a lot of people that prefer to isolate food, so maybe we'll have a crunchy meal and then separately we might have a soft meal. And so within that meal, those flavours will be amazing because they'll really think about what food is, what um, substance, food substance is going to go into that dish to, to highlight that texture. Um, don't forget that cooking is a visual activity as well, so the actual act of doing it, so cutting up fruit, vegetables, um, meat, anything that we're going to be putting in a dish, it's visual when we're weighing out substance, um, liquids, solids, whatever it might be, when we're um, pouring it into bowls, the visual act of pouring, when we're washing it, when we're cleaning, right at the end, that's all visual information as well. But the mixing, the doing, lots of proprioceptive, lots of body awareness, lots of physical input without the vestibular. So without that sense of obvious movement, I'm becoming aware of my body when I'm mixing up in a bowl or when I'm cooking on the oven or when I feel the heat on my body when I open the oven. But I'm regulating, I'm controlling the amount of movement that I am giving myself. So if I'm hypersensitive to vestibular input, it's a really, really supportive activity. Um, when we're thinking about eating, it's really important to consider proprioception and vestibular. They are our internal sensory systems, but therefore it's also really important to think about our interoceptive sense, so awareness of uh, my internal feelings, such as when I'm hungry, when I'm thirsty, when um, I need the toilet, when I can feel my heart beating. All of those sensations are supportive of our proprioceptive and vestibular sense. When we eat, it's great for our well-being. We're becoming aware of our bodies and how our body feels and how our body responds to our environment. So our interoceptive sense is being stimulated when we're eating and even when we're cooking, when we're smelling those smells in our environment. 